Hi, I'm Jesper. It's Friday, and I am just about to... Ow! Um, let's go back to Monday of that week. My boss told me to get my finger out of my rear end and start the renovation of our bedroom. The main thing of that project would be a headboard and some shelves on each side of the bed. I've recently made an end grain coffee table, so I promptly suggested making a cookie end grain headboard. But my boss doesn't like too much of what she calls hobby ton. But hey, what about a slab of wood with some clear epoxy and some flowers in the clear epoxy? While I was kindly being made aware of all the mistakes I made with epoxy and how long time it took to complete it, it was suggested I should probably make something a little different. And then my boss took off to teach at a seminar for the rest of the week. And I realized I had until sometime Friday all alone. So what should I build for the bedroom? I'm going to make a pallet wood bedroom. And I'm going to surprise my boss and have it finished when she gets back in four days. What could possibly go wrong? Over the years I have dismantled a bunch of these CP9 pallets. And the unique thing about them, these bottom boards are pretty thick. I have been cutting them off with a circle or so like this and just left them in my wood stock waiting for a project. And I think that project is now. So let's get it all out of the gems. So while I was thinking about how to make all of these into a headboard, I remembered that my boss likes herringbone floors and patterns. A herringbone pattern is inspired by the bones from a fish and we don't have any floors like that, but perhaps I could make a herringbone headboard for her. I start by cutting off one end to get a square reference point. And then I set up a stop block on my miter saw and I cut all the opposite ends and voila, all the boards are the same length. All the boards also need to be the same width and normally I would run them through my table saw. But my new table saw is unfortunately not operational yet, so I'm running them through my bandsaw instead. I still have no regrets about selling the bandsaw. I have two sheets of thin plywood that came from shipping boxes and I decided to use them as the back of the headboard. I clamped them down to the work surface and started laying out the herringbone pattern. When I was happy with the pattern, I knocked open a bottle of wood glue and started gluing it all together. I let the glue dry overnight and now there is only four days till my boss returns. I'm feeling pretty confident I can make it on time at this point. The headboard is totally stable. I rough trim the edges and I give it a tour with the belt sander until it's relatively flat. A few dusty moments later. A dusty hour later. Many dusty hours later. I tried to fill some of the holes with some dust from the belt sander and some CA glue. But that is not the best solution. I remember my boss wanted a small table or shelf by the bed. And I'm thinking of a creative way to make one. I have run out of the full length pallet boards. But wait, I have all these offcuts. While that dries, I'm giving the headboard a little chamfer.
When the shelf's dry, I run it through the thicknesser a few times, and I cut it to size with a track saw. I need to attach the shelf to the headboard, and I'm thinking of doing a mortise and tenant joint, sort of. To help me with that, I'm trying out a new tool in my shop. The shaper is a router, but it's also a CNC. I'm drawing a simple shape on the display, and then I'm placing it on my workpiece, the shelf, and then cutting along the outside line of the shape. On the headboard, I now need to cut out the same shape, so I just draw where I want the shelf to attach. And then I place the digital shape on top of my pencil line. And then I cut out all the material inside the shape. If you are one of the people who hates mistakes and bad judgment, perhaps skip ahead a little, because I'm going to try out a few things that I'm going to regret. I want a darker color of the wood, so I'm trying out the pre-aging stain from Rubio Monaco. It made it go all blue, and I didn't want that, so I sanded it back as good as I could. Hoping to get a darker color, I decided to try out the Rubio oil called Smoked Oak. It made it go all green and it looked like I had used pressure treated wood. I didn't want that, so I tried to sand it back. The still wet oil clogged the sandpaper, so I took a very shallow pass with an electric plane. It's now Thursday afternoon, and I convinced myself that I just like the natural color of the wood. I just applied some Rubio Monaco Pure, but to my horror I saw the light wood was looking very yellow, and the first stain was still visible in some parts. And the oil just highlighted it. I was very devastated. My boss was coming home in less than 24 hours, and the only thing I had was a very ugly block of pallet wood. It was like the universe was trying to send me a message. When you try your best, but you don't succeed, when you get what you want. When you try your best, but you don't succeed. When you try your best, but don't succeed. And when I didn't listen, the universe just turned up the sound. When you try your best, but you don't succeed. Thursday, very late, I gave up. And I decided to burn the damn thing. When you try your best, but you don't succeed. When you feel so tired, but you can't sleep. Stuck in reverse. But when I burned it, I realized that burning was really just a quick way of getting the finish off. And it also gave the wood the brownish color I was looking for. So I sanded the burned wood a bit back, and very, very late Thursday night, I settled on the Rubio Monaco walnut on top of the sanded and burned wood. And because I was in the very hours of the very last day before my wife, uh, my boss returns, I really needed it to work. While it cured, I turned my attention on how to mount it on the wall. Since it's a pallet wood project, I'm going to mount it with pallet wood too. I haven't done any French cleats before, and my table saw is still not up and running. But hey, I can tilt my bandsaw table. And before long, I have these two long boards cut at the same angle. I mount one on the wall and the other one on the back of the headboard. 
I give the headboard a quick touch up, and while it cures, I figure I may just have time to make a little statement. A little rebellious action. You see, I only made one side with a shelf, and now it's time to make a little table to fit the other side of the bed. My side. A friendly neighbor gave me some cherry logs, and I'm going to make the most hobbiton ish bedside table I can come up with. After cutting the lock to rough length with a chainsaw, I remove the bark. And then I cut the tabletop in flat with the bandsaw. I still have no regrets selling the bandsaw. I'm still not regretting. I use a wire brush on an anchor grinder to clean up the surface and, of course, a lot of sanding. I wonder what kind of legs I should mount on this. I have some metal legs from an old IKEA sofa, but unfortunately only two of them are left and tables are more stable with three legs. So I make the third leg out of an ash branch. This is a log furniture technique where you use a tenon cutter on the branch and then you drill a corresponding hole in the log and just hammer the leg in the hole. I poured Rubio Monaco over the cherry log, but unfortunately the camera wasn't recording that. So I'll guess we'll have to wait and see how it looks until my boss comes home. And that's literally only a few hours away now, so I better mount the whole thing now. People say I need to get a little action. People say my love life is fiction. One pallet wood bedroom build later. Right. What I like makes no difference as they go oh, get a life. 